Ooh, we are back, guys. And it is so great to see you here today as we're going to be talking about the Nikon Z7. Guys, this camera right here. The Nikon Z7 was a game changer for Nikon when it was first released in September 2018. Guys, this camera was a game changer for me as well. It's the first full frame mirrorless camera that I've ever owned. You know what? Let me take that back. Technically, the Sony A7R, the original A7R, uh, was the first full frame camera that I've ever owned. But regardless, this is one of my favorite cameras that I've ever owned to date. But as discussed in a recent video, Nikon has plans for the Z8 in the works. We might even see the Z8 sometimes this year. You can check that video out by clicking the link in the description below. This got me thinking guys, with the Z8 in the works, what would be the top reasons why you still invest in a Z7 in 2020? If you stick around to the end of this video, you'll learn 10 reasons why the Z7 is a excellent choice. And you'll also learn how to enter our giveaway for a brand new DJI Mavic Mini or a Peter Mechanic No Matter backpack or a hundred dollar Adorama gift card. So let's roll that intro out. Okay. Reason number one, the price is awesome. When I picked up my Z7, it was $3,400 just for the body by itself. As of today, the price has dropped to $2,800. Now, when I picked up the Z7, I felt the $3,400 price tag was well worth it. Heck, today the $2,800 price tag is obviously even more worth it. You simply get a lot of camera for your money. Here's a look at some of the Z7's primary specs that make it such a great buy. First of all, guys, we're talking about a 46 megapixel full frame sensor, which is the same size as what's in the Nikon DA50. You have an XSpeed 6 image processor, which results in reduced noise compared to the XSpeed 5 processor, which of course is in the DA50. Native ISO range from 64 to 25,600, and that is expandable to 32 to 102,400. You have a 3.69 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder with 100% coverage, 3.2 inch tilting touchscreen LCD with 2.1 million dots of resolutions, nine frames per second burst shooting with 12 bit raw thanks to a recent firmware update, hybrid PDAF autofocus system with 493 autofocus points, AF sensitivity is minus one, two, plus 19 EV. 4K UHD video at 30 frames, 35 frames, and 24 frames per second, and full HD at 50, 60, 100, or 120. <laughs> Magnesium aloe body with full weather sealing, and the shutter is good to 200,000, or so they say it is. So I don't know who sat there and sat around and go clicking it. Does somebody, does somebody actually sit around and click it? I know they don't, they have a machine that does it, but can you imagine that? That's a lot of shots. Is the Z7 a perfect camera? Yeah, of course it isn't. Personally, I wish it had a front facing flip out LCD. That's my personal preference. The battery life isn't amazing, but it's not bad either. And the range of lenses isn't as robust as one would hope, but Nikon is doing a really good job of improving that. Long story short, this was a great buy in 2018, and guys, it's still an even better buy in 2020, if you ask me. And here's the kicker. Whenever the Z8 drops, we can expect to see a significant price drop in new Z7s. Who knows, four or 500 bucks, maybe even more. Reason number two, there's a growing used market. I'll be the first to say that $2,800 is still a big pile of cash. Not everyone can afford to buy a brand new Z7. But now that it's been out for over a year and a half, there's a growing used market which enables you to save even more money. Sites like MPB and KH are excellent places, guys, to find used Z7 bodies. For example, take a look at MPB. They have several Z7s in stock at the moment with the graded like new starting at $2,254 and those graded as excellent starting at $2,099. The great thing about these cameras is that they are so durable and have such a high shutter life that you can opt in for example, a excellent Z7, save yourself 700 bucks over a new one and still get the same performance 
for years and years to come. And when the Z8 does drop, that'll entice plenty of people out there to sell or trade in their Z7 so they can get the latest and greatest camera. And the good news for you is if the price point for a brand new Z7 is still too high, the used market will have many, many more Z7s available. And with the price drop on the new Z7s, used Z7s will be cheaper as well. For the patient person, this means you can truly get a smoking deal on a Z7 in the upcoming future. Number three, more and more lenses are coming out. Now earlier, I mentioned that one of the cons about the Z7 was that there wasn't a ton of lens options when it first came out. But Nikon has done a great job expanding the lens options and their future roadmap looks, yeah, pretty tasty guys. It looks pretty awesome. Initially, there was a number of 1.8 and F4 lens options, but there was no 2.8 level glass out there. However, now you can get a near complete 2.8 Trinity going with the 2470 2.8. Uh, Nikon recently announced the 70 to 200, which should have been started shipping already right now in February. I guess we're getting close on that. Obviously, you're missing the 1424-28, but what they do have, and I personally own, is this 1430. It's an F4, which is a great lens, and for now, completes the Trinity. Is the lens lineup for early 2020 ideal? No, not at all. But the point is that it's much deeper than it was in 2018 when the Nikon Z7 first came out and it's going to get better and better. And Nikon has plans for a 50 millimeter 1.2, a 20 millimeter 1.8, and a 1424 2.8, all of which could be released sometime this year. While it's taken Nikon a few years to build up a respectable lens lineup for their Z cameras, I'd rather they take their time and get the lenses right. Number four, superb image quality. Guys, the Z7 sensor is absolutely incredible and creates beautiful photos. Now, what I found, as I'm sure you will if you get a Z7, is that the color is particularly good. The ISO performance and the ability to capture details in dynamic range are excellent as well. DxO Mark has rated the Z7 sensor at 99 out of 100. Guys, that's a good indication of how good this sensor is that Nikon put into this thing. In fact, the Z7 sensor is right up there with the likes of the Nikon D850, the Sony A7R3, and the Sony A7R4 as one of the best sensors that they've ever tested. That's not bad company when you think about it. Number five, the ergonomics are fantastic. Guys, when I switched from the D850 to the Z7, I was a little concerned with how the Z7 would feel or how it would handle rather. After all, it was a much smaller body than what I was used to. But once I got the camera and began using it, guys, I was pleasantly surprised in just how good the ergonomics are in this. In fact, the Z7 borrows heavily from the D850's design, so it kind of feels like an old friend. The buttons are well laid out and very intuitive to use. The grip is nice and chunky and well, very comfortable to hold. And while the button layout isn't the same as the DA50, I think Nikon did a great job with the Z7's design to ensure that the layout is fresh, updated, but with an old, familiar Nikon feel to it. On top of all that, the lightweight design makes it extremely easy to handle. Next, guys, number six firmware updates are making the Z7 better and better. One of the best things about the Z7 is that it keeps getting better and better because of firmware updates. My personal favorite so far is the 2.20 update that gave the Z7 support for CF Express cards. CF Express cards are insanely fast compared to the standard XQD cards and are much more functional with the huge files that the Z7 creates. Of course, another excellent firmware update has been the addition of eye detection AF feature for still shooting and improved AF performance in low light. That update also includes AE tracking capabilities and continuous high-speed shooting. I'm sure there's gonna be a constant stream of updates over the years, so as time goes by, the Z7 will just keep getting better and better. Number seven, Live View is absolutely awesome. One of the things I loved with my D850 was the Live View capabilities, but the Z7, guys, is even better. Primarily, I like the LCD is a 3-2 aspect ratio rather than the usual 4-3. Since 3-2 is aspect ratio of the photos that it takes, the LCD seems like it's much larger than the 3.2 inch size. Additionally, since I'm primarily a landscape photographer, I do a lot of live view composition, so having the LCD match the aspect ratio of the photos makes composing my shots a lot easier task. Number eight, excellent EVF. Now, the LCD is paired with an equally impressive EVF. With 3.6 million dots of resolution, it's a beautiful view of the subject. It offers nearly 100% frame coverage and a 37 degree diagonal viewing angle along with minimal lag and blackout. Honestly, I think this EVF offers just about the same responsiveness and feel as the D850's optical viewfinder. In fact, you can access the apply settings to the live view function to set the EVF and the LCD to display similar contrast, brightness, 
in colors. But if you prefer the feel of the optical viewfinder, you can turn the setting off. Either way, having this customization is a nice touch. The EVF window also has a Florentine coat, which not only repels dirt, but also reduces flare. It's just a clean, crisp, comfortable view that you can enjoy for long periods of shooting. I've taken this camera all over the US and abroad in several different countries, and even on the longest days of shooting, I found that I had very minimal eye strain when using this EVF. Number nine, size and build. Now, I don't think anyone would argue that the Z7 is a great size. At just 5.28 by 3.98 by 2.68 inches, it's small enough to feel comfortable and carry for hours on end, but not so small that you feel like your hands and fingers are overwhelming it. As noted earlier, the lightweight build makes it great to handle as well. I took my Z7 to Norway last year, guys, and we had some extremely long and <laughs> very cold days of shooting landscapes, and guys, the Z7 was a dream to handle all day long. And speaking of Norway, the Z7 did a great job with the cold and snow. The weather ceiling is fantastic and the durability of the construction was much appreciated since things can get a little rough and tumbling when you're traveling to the other side of the world. Number 10, solid video performance. Now, while the Z6 is a better camera for video, the Z7 more than holds its own. The on-sensor focus helps the Z7 focus just as quickly when shooting video as it does with shooting stills. This was a big upgrade for Nikon, given that the D850 and its predecessors used slower contrast-based focusing for video. You can record 4K 24, 25, 30 frames per second, and all while using the full width of the frame. Uncompressed video output is 10-bit, and you can also use a flat and long profile when using an external recorder. You can also record directly to the memory card and to an external recorder at the same time, though this cuts the HDMI output down to 8-bit. While there's no 4K 60 option and slow motion at 120p is only available at HD, guys, this camera is no slouch for video purposes. Now, full disclosure, I normally don't use the Z7 for video work, I prefer my EOS R for that, but the times that I do record video with the Z7, man, it does a really good job. There you go, guys, 10 reasons why the Z7 is a great buy in 2020. From its price, to its features, to the build quality, and more. This camera represents an excellent value, a value, by the way, that is only gonna get better and better with time. If you're thinking about upgrading your current camera, you want a good, solid, all-around camera, the Z7 should definitely get your consideration. Now, before I close off, I did wanna give you details on that giveaway that I mentioned to you at the start of this video. To be clear, we have three awesome things that we're giving away this month. A DJI Mavic Mini, a Peter McKinnon Nomadic Backpack, and a $100 Adorama shopping spree. To enter the giveaway, it couldn't be easier. Step one, all you have to do is like this video. Step two, leave a comment down below. In fact, the more videos of ours that you watch and comment on, the more chances that you have to win. So check out some of our other content and drop some comments. Step three, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And that's all you need to do. For complete details on this giveaway, check out the description down below. All right, there you go, guys. 10 quick reasons why the Nikon Z7 is such an amazing camera in 2020. If you found this video to be helpful, hit the like button down below. If you are currently not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit the bell to be notified as we're coming out with a new video. So you get out there, have an awesome day, and create your best shot.